This is the new Volkswagen Tiguan. And this is the new Skoda Kodiak. Both cars have undergone a massive transformation for their latest generations. They're both bigger and better than they were before. But which one offers the best all-round package? Well, you join me today in the rainy UK and you join me in sunny Spain taking a look at the second generation Skoda Kodiak where I'll be explaining each of the different elements of each of these cars from the same bloodline and finding out which one offers the best family package. I really hope you enjoy this video because it's going to be a little bit difficult to put together, but hopefully I can pull it off. If you wanted to see my full Volkswagen Tiguan review, then you can click the link up there where it's a full video dedicated to the Tiguan. And if you want to watch my full review of the Skoda Kodiak, then you can do that by clicking up there. But first of all, whilst pinning these cars against each other, let's start by the design. Which of these two vehicles is the best looking? So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So first off, before we get started, let's talk about the design of both models because each of them have changed immensely for their new generations. Finished in this persimmon red, yeah, it's pretty orange, isn't it? That's what I'd call it as well, but they're calling it red. So if Volkswagen say it's red, it's red. It's in the R line, and that means it's the top spec, almost sporty model. You get this light bar across the centre, and you get this nice, wide, crisscrossy, gloss black grille. You also get quite a lot of chrome as well. You've got a chrome bar which runs along the bottom of the grille. Now, this vehicle is on 18-inch, two-tone alloy wheels finished in the chrome and also black, and these look pretty stylish to me. You've got a full body coloured car, so you've got the same coloured wing mirrors and you've also got that chrome around the outside of the windows and you've got a set of chrome roof rails. You'll also see that you've got gloss black wheel arch surrounds and you've got that light bar which is continued around the rear of the vehicle. You also have a bit more of that crisscrossy black gloss and again you've got a chrome bar along the bottom. Despite both cars growing in size and the Tiguan being bigger than it was previously, the Kodiak is still the bigger of the two and it's offered in both five seat and seven seat configurations and the Tiguan all space is yet to be announced if it will even come. But talking about design, I'm really impressed with the design of the Kodiak. It's managed to make a massive car look pretty handsome. This model sits on some 19 inch wheels, but you can get some slightly larger wheels as well. And it has a slightly rugged feel about it. You've got this black cladding, which goes around the wheels down the side of the car, and it's followed around to the front bumper. It's quite a handsome front bumper, actually. And I love the fact that you've got some physical air curtains with a bit more of that black just framing those. I also like the fact that you've got these crystal headlamps on the Skoda. I really, really like these. I think they look very premium. Around the front, you've got a new grille design. You can actually specify this car to have a light up grille, but maybe that's taking things too far. Skoda have opted for a more simplistic design around the back. You've got the lights which are connected by this bar, although as far as I'm aware, this isn't a light bar. It doesn't light up just the around the edges do. It's quite simple. You've got a nice robust bumper. You've got a rear wiper. You've got a nice little spoiler. But pretty much when it comes to design to the rear of this car, that's about it. When it comes to design, both cars are handsome SUVs, but which you prefer is going to be a personal preference. The Tiguan's softened edges, modern light bar and wide grille is more daring in the design of the two, whereas the Kodiak adapts a more traditional styling, favouring matte plastics around the bumpers opposed to gloss black. Let me know your thoughts on the two models and which looks better from the outside to you. Next up, let's take a little peek inside.
The Tiguan's interior is thoughtfully designed, featuring high-quality materials like soft-touch leather on the doors and dashboard. The addition of gloss black and silver trim finishes add a touch of sophistication. The life trim level includes ambient lighting on the dash, while the Elegance and R-Line versions offer patterned lighting across the dashboard, which can be customised with a mirage of colours. This R-Line model features supportive sports seats finished in traditional Volkswagen pattern. The centre console features storage and cup holders which remain on show. Overall, the cabin feels simplistic and modern, if a little flashy for some tastes. Inside the Kodiak is a more traditional approach to the interiors, with plain leather seats and dashboard. The layout is extremely similar, however there's a two-step dashboard with textured design, with subtle ambient lighting and essential storage sections which are hidden away by retractable covers to maintain a clean cabin. Within the dashboard of the Tiguan is a 15-inch touchscreen. However, this screen is an optional extra on all trim levels, and a 12.9 screen is standard across the range. It's clear and easy to use with bright graphics and responds well to inputs. There are not physical climate control dials, but controls for these remain at the bottom of the screen at all times, with additional shortcuts at the top for quick action for most functions. There's also a smart dial in the centre console that can control the volume but with a press in, change to ambience of the cabin and then to drive modes. These three controls are set options for this button. The Kodiak gets one option of a 13-inch screen which sits a little higher in the dash. It gets a similar layout but with its own graphics. Response is also impressive with many similar shortcuts permanently on the screen for ease of use. However, the Skoda does still have physical climate control dials and it features a similar smart dial in the centre. This can however be personalised to feature an array of shortcuts including fan speed and nav for example. Now, how about practicality? And let's kick things off by the boot space in the Tiguan. Beat this Skoda, it's absolutely huge. Inside this boot, you will find 652 litres of space. That's ginormous and it's far better than a lot of vehicles in its class. As you can see, you've got a nice flat load area. You've got an adjustable boot floor with the space for a spare tyre. And you've also got the levers to be able to drop down your rear seats, a couple of luggage hooks and 12 volt charging. Plus all versions from the mid-spec and above get an electric boot as standard. Ha, you call that boot space Tiguan? Well, how about the boot space in this car? It's over 300 litres. No, uh, actually that's when you've got the third row of seats up. If we put this third row down, Then how about 920 litres? The added space in the boot is of course to accommodate the third row, but overall the Skoda is only 219 millimetres longer than the Tiguan. Practicality, however, is Skoda's middle name. There's a similar load height, but there's space in the underfloor including for a retractable parcel shelf and also a spare wheel. There's additional hooks and tether points for a luggage net. The electric boot is standard on SEL trims and higher. OK, but surely practicality in the back has got to be the best in the Tiguan. This is fantastic. These rear doors open nice and wide so it's easy to get in. And then once you are in, I've got plenty of legroom. I've got lots of headroom as well. And you've also got somewhere to pop your mobile phone on the backs of the seats. You've also got extra door cards behind there. You've got nice felt lined big door cars for popping items in in the back. You've got this pull out armrest which has two cup holders there and you've also got somewhere you can pop your mobile phone or tablet where you can angle it towards you and if you're not using that and you wanted some extra storage you can actually pull down this middle seat and then you've got through loading through to the boot. Beat that Skoda! Rear seat passengers are treated to the same luxury as you get in the front of the cabin as well. It's so lovely in the back here. And if you're wondering, Tish, you don't look like you've got much legroom. That's because these seats are currently slid forward. So if I slide them back, and let's do these ones as well, just so you can see a bit better. 
I've then got a ton of legroom. It's really very spacious. You can also adjust the backrests as well. And then I've got a centre armrest. This features three spaces for cups. However, no clever standard device holder like in the back of the Tiguan. You've got pockets on the backs of the seats, but you've also got another little pocket where you can pop your phone, which I think is brilliant. This car's also got the iPad um, holders, which have been added to it. So this is an accessory. And in this centre console, you also have this other bit of accessory which can just slot over the transmission tunnel and it turns into some additional storage. Both models also feature charge points, rear air vents and the choice for rear climate control. And lastly, not forgetting you've got those child sun blinds. Of course, the final trump card for the Skoda is having the option to add two averagely sized third row seats. On to engines, which are very similar throughout the two cars. The Tiguan is available with a 1.5 litre petrol engine with two power outputs, 130 in the lower spec models and the option of 150 in the higher. These are both mild hybrids. There's a similar setup for the 62 mile electric range plug-in hybrid with the option of 204 and 272 PS versions. Finally, you can get a 2 litre diesel with 150 PS all of these models are front-wheel drive. In the Kodiak, you'll find less options, but they are very similar, including the 150 PS 1.5 litre mild hybrid unit and the 2 litre diesel of the same output. It's been confirmed that the Skoda will get the 62 mile plug-in hybrid engines a little later than the Tiguan. However, these will likely mimic the Volkswagen. What is different, however, is the Kodiak does get a more powerful 2-litre diesel engine with 193 PS and four-wheel drive capabilities, which I can imagine will be a big selling point for owners. Both cars are bigger in size and, unfortunately, bigger in price. The Tiguan price starts from just over £34,000 for the basic model, with the least powerful 130 engine – all the way up to just over 48,000 for the higher power plug-in hybrid R-Line, and that's without adding any extras. It's a similar story with the Skoda, with its cheapest model coming in at £36,500 for a five-seat model, and all the way up to just over 46000 for the seven-seat SEL model with four-wheel drive diesel, and that's before the plug-in hybrids are added. Like for like, a mid-spec match Tiguan with the 150 PS petrol costs £36,895 and a five-seat SE Kodiak with the same engine, just £250 less at £36,645. You'll get the added space, but the Kodiak is no longer the budget option of the two. There's no denying that this Volkswagen Tiguan has been improved in every single way over the outgoing model that it replaces. It's now more stylish, more practical and offers more equipment as standard, including technology. But is it better than the Skoda Kodiak? Well, I don't actually know because I'm kind of Tish from the past and Tish from the future is the one that's driving the Kodiak. So I tell you what, let's head over to her so she can tell you which car she thinks is the best out of the two. Thanks, Tish from the past. Well, that's a difficult one to answer. Both cars are far superior to the models that they replace. And that's saying something because both cars were very well-rounded already. But it really seems that the designers and everything that goes into designing and building and putting elements in these vehicles, they've always been thinking about the target audience and how can this be better for the people who are living with these vehicles. And the result of that is two really impressive models. But which one is best? Well, I didn't think the Tiguan could be improved. I really loved that car and I do like the R-Line sports seats and there's lots of elements which I like. I really like the light up dashboard. But if you're looking for premium, and I can't believe I'm saying this, then you need to be looking at the Skoda Kodiak. It just offers an element of traditional styling over the Tiguan, which I think is going to appeal to a lot of people. Maybe you want all the modern technology and you want the lights and you want all of the dials. But what about if you want something more classic? What if you want something a bit more timeless? 
then I think this would be your option. That's a bit of a roundabout answer, isn't it? I can't really give you a definitive answer as to which one I prefer because I really like them both. But let me know, which ones do you prefer? Pop it in the comments down below. Are you in Team Tiguan or are you in Team Kodiak? Oh, and don't forget, if you do like new car reviews and car content, then this is the place to be. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys. See you later. Did we pull it off, Tish from the future? Uh, Tish from the past? We actually went and did it. Yeah, even after a few too many Aperol spritzes last night. Yeah, if there's another Tish in the future to this one, uh, my message to her would be just don't have that added Aperol spritz. But I'm proud of you. <laughs>